there another Heisman candidate besides Tim Tebow in this conference? Probably not. Uh, obviously, Snead's got to be the, the the one name that kind of jumps out. You know, the, the the way the Heisman is now, it almost has to be a quarterback, mm -hmm. and it's got to be from a, a team that that throws the ball quite a bit. Uh, you know, and, and when you have Bradford and you have Colt McCoy coming back, also, uh, it would take some real spectacular numbers. So, offhand, I would say probably not. Um, uh, Cecil, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give a shout out to a guy who has no chance to win the Heisman. As, as Chris pointed out, as you guys know, if there ever was a year for a dark horse winner, this is not the year. No. You know, when you've got when you've got two returning Heisman Trophy winners playing um, and a third guy who certainly merits mention in that company. And if it's not Tebow, Bradford, or McCoy, I'll be absolutely shocked. There is a guy in the SEC who's the best at his position in the country, Eric Berry at Tennessee. You know, if it, were, if it were simply based on superiority at your position, he's the best safety in college football now. Yeah. A, safeties don't win the Heisman. B, he's on a team that, not like yet. I say, I, I, I don't think is going to be that successful. Um, you know, maybe if he if he <laughs> intercepts Tebow seven times in the Florida well, Tennessee they've talked, game, they talked about moving, putting him on offense. They, a little bit. they did that a little bit actually yeah. in the Alabama game last year, but it was kind of misbegotten. It didn't really uh, amount to anything. He's their best player. I can understand yeah. him wanting to have him touch the football, but to me, it would almost be like um, Alabama moving Julio Jones to safety because he's a, probably be a great safety. He's a big guy with with great, but you know. You, he needs to do what he does. And, and if that includes kick returns, then, then right. so be it. I would not put him on kick returns because I, I, all I can think is Bubba Caldwell. Sure. Coming up, coming yeah, up. sure. Robbie, how about you? I think the only other possibility really is Snead, and it, I think it's a slim one. But, you know, with the expectations going to this year, and if he has a huge year, puts up huge numbers, and they win, and they win the West, and they're ranked in the top five, he's going to have a chance. His name's going to come up. And a lot has to happen for that to happen, then. Yeah, well, and I think the only way that can happen is if Ole Miss goes undefeated. Yeah, yeah, they're going to have to run the table, and, basically. Yeah. And, and there's a certain cosmic justice that Ole Miss has had probably two quarterbacks who deserved it and didn't they get never it. Got a win. Both yeah. named Manning. <laughs> Maybe um, it'll be Jonathan so. Crompton. Maybe he'll win. <laughs> now we're reaching see. a little bit. Yeah. I, I, think we'll though, I think, though, because especially the way that it, things came down last year, I think a lot of the voters, especially coming out of the gate, are going to be looking to vote for, for Tebow. They're going to want to vote for Tebow this year. Yeah, my theory is they're going to want to vote for Colt McCoy because here, let's, let's let them all have let one. Let them all have one. You know, but yeah. we'll, we'll see. That's a good it. point. As you know, there are way too many Heisman voters. Right, and can I make one more plea for the Heisman? Could we – could we please vote after the season? I was just thinking that season, which the includes, best player on the well, best team. Well, I'll, I, you know, I, I, re I vote, and, and I wrestled with it, and it, last year not not so much because I, I do, if I've seen guys in the Southeastern Conference, I do. But I voted for Reggie Bush over Vince Young, but if I'd That's seen the right. Rose Bowl, yeah, yeah, I'd have voted right. for Vince Young, and Vince Young should have won the Heisman. I felt Heisman. bad. I felt bad about it. Yeah, so. well, and not only that, but it, I think any vote that comes in before the SEC championship game should be thrown away, thrown uh, in the trash. Yeah. But there are too many Heisman voters. You got there's an old bit writer in Spokane who <laughs> probably still has a Heisman vote. OJ, he still got. Well, it. you know, last year Tebow wasn't even on a great many ballots. 177 ballots. And if, if they wait till after the game, there's no way they, he would have been on everybody's ballot. The best team in the country playing the game he did. Exactly. Well, I, I mean, my answer to the Heisman question is Snead. I think is the only guy with a shot. Which brings us to our next question. Which of the three new coaches in the league? And, and the funny thing is, we're probably going to have these same 12 guys next year because nobody's really on a hot seat. But which of the three new coaches will have the most immediate success? So that would be for this season. Robbie, start with you. I think maybe Mullen because he's going to have a little bit more of an entertaining offense. They're going to score some points. Traditionally, they're pretty good on defense. And the expectations there are just win a few games and you've been a yeah. success. And I think five and seven. I think he can win. Statue. He can win three, four games, and it's going to be a successful year for him. And how something positive for recruiting and for the future. Chris, how about you? I, I kind of look at it from the other, uh, on the other side of that. I, if if Auburn doesn't win, even you know 500, I think a lot of fans are going to be going, "Why did we get this guy?" And I in Tennessee, I was, I'm already saying. That. Yeah, well, <laughs> a lot of people have. <laughs> Tennessee, I think it's going to be the same thing. Although I think I think Kiff and they might give an. Um, a little bit more leeway to because of, of uh, he's got a pretty good coaching staff and he's going to attract some more recruits I think 
Uh, so for the immediate impact, I think you got to go with Mullen. And, and I mean, he's, he's a guy with really nothing to lose the, the first year or two, especially. Yeah, I know. And Cecil, I think really all three of these guys, um, while they're not on hot seats, they, they, they have a little bit of that nothing to lose mentality. But, and you guys know, because I know you cover Alabama, so you're aware of Auburn. What happened with Auburn, and, and can he get him back to normal? I know the Tony Franklin experiment was, was part of the they, they have some talent and, and still have some talent on defense. More Their, their offense was just you know, such, a, such a disaster last year, and, and I think that finally sort of sapped the life out of their team. They had and apparently a lot of contentiousness on the coaching staff, which, which can also do it. Um, they should be you know, pretty good defensively. I just don't know how, how they're going to score enough points to win a lot of games. And I would say I agree with you that, that neither one of those two first-year guys are, are on what coaches, what, what fans think of as this year hot seat. But they are on, they are both, I promise you, they walk in the door on what I would call the Ron Zook, Mike Shula hot seat, which is they got three years yeah. to, to yeah. either show it or be gone. So and we know how you know, it's not a, yeah, <laughs> no yeah. patience there. Um, yeah, so so there, there's they either are going to have to be good or be gone. And another thing I think you got to factor in real quick is like Auburn and Tennessee quarterback situation. I mean, yeah, it's just not, not good. good, not yeah. good at either place. Or Mississippi State. I'm gonna yeah, no, <laughs> not good there either. Actually, those right. are the bottom three in quarterback play. I, I I'm gonna go with Kiffin, believe it or not. And, and here's my theory. I think he's got very good assistant coaches. We know Ed Orgeron can't co be a head coach, but he, I think he's a good assistant. He's a good assistant. He can rip his shirt Southern off. Southern Cal, well. he can rip his shirt off. <laughs> he can drink Red Bull like it's, <laughs> like it's water. Um, you know, Monty Kiffin, I, I'm interested in seeing how well they're going to play defensively, but he's still, he knows what he's doing. So I think he's got a really good, he's got a great recruiting class coming in and, you know, obviously great facilities and everything. Even though he's made guys mad, you know, coaches around the league, including the coaches that you cover and the coach that I cover, um, I think that gets into people's heads the wrong If you let that get in your head the wrong way, he'll come in there and go, hey, they were focusing on me and not on the team. So, Here's my theory on Monty Kiffin, I think. For 100 years, every Saturday, Sunday, he's he not faced. 100, he's not. No, for well, however many years he was in the NFL. <laughs> looks he may look Sunday after Sunday, he faced the same exact offense. Yeah. They're all the same in the NFL. In college football, everyone's different. Everybody's going to throw something different. So see how he does with it, that. It, it is a game that, that on any list of the 20 most interesting SEC games hadn't been discussed. You know, it's not. Florida, LSU, it's not Alabama and Ole Miss. Somebody's got to lose the Tennessee-Auburn game. Yeah. And whoever does, <laughs> yeah. their fans are really going to start looking at oh, each yeah. other. Kind of <laughs> well, and the great thing about that is it's October 3rd, which means it's our <laughs> off week. So yeah. we get to sit back and watch right. it. Speak, come, speaking of games, let's go to the game you most like to see this year. What game are you really looking forward to? And, and the obvious answer for me is Florida, LSU, um, because obviously you're talking about the last two national champions. It's at Tiger Stadium, which is a great venue. It's in Baton Rouge, so we'll have a good time Friday night. Um, so it's hard to say anything but Florida LSU, but I'm sure that you guys have some thoughts on that, Chris. Well, the quarter I want to see is the first quarter of Florida, Tennessee. <laughs> um, maybe even half. I don't know. Uh, no, that's a game I want to see, too. I want to see Florida and LSU. I, I just think in terms of talent, they're probably one, one two in, 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 the, uh, in the conference. And, you know, another year from now, which, you know, probably going to be Alabama instead of, of LSU. But, um, boy, you know, what a great setting that's going to be. I, I'm, I'm a little jealous. I'd like to be at that game. For, for games that I'll get to see, Alabama and Ole Miss, I think. Um, just what the atmosphere will be like in Oxford. Um, will they be, you know, if they're, if they're undefeated in the middle of October, um, you know, that'll be as crazy probably as they've ever had a game there. You know, it's a bigger stadium, relatively speaking, than they've ever had. You know, a lot of years when they were good, they weren't even playing many games in Oxford. They were playing in Jackson. So it'll be, right. it'll really be, you know, me too. Um, mm -hmm. It'll be interesting from that standpoint. And it's the, it's the first of that kind of round robin between Alabama, Ole Miss, and LSU in the West. So um, of, of the games that I'll get to see, um, it would be that one. Um, Y'all mentioned Florida LSU and, and Florida Tennessee. I'd like to see Florida Georgia just to see. Uh, just to see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. What's round three? Yeah. And that is, and, and the other reason I say that, that it'll happen for me, but that is Alabama's open week. So uh -huh. as you were saying, you watch, that's one I can sit back and watch. <laughs> How about you, Robbie? I'm jumping on the LSU Florida bandwagon. Uh, Myers never won there. Tebow no. hasn't won there. Meyer was crying after the game in 2005. 05, yeah. 
And now LSU was embarrassed last year at Florida Field. I mean, you don't see that happen to LSU, the way that game played out. So I think it's a revenge factor. Tiger Stadium's gonna be alive. It's gonna be, the fans are gonna be hyped and loaded. So I just think it's gonna be an unbelievable atmosphere and a very intense game. The worst part about it, we'll be on deadline. Yeah. That's, that's the worst part. That's but, the worst part for our readers. Yeah, you know, I talked to Tebow about this. And I, I asked him, I said, what's your favorite stadium other than, other than the Swamp to play in? He said, oh, Baton Rouge. I love going there. And of course, last year they got a hold of his cell phone and they were calling him. And he scored the first touchdown and then it went like this. <laughs> Talk him a did. little bit. But, uh, you know, why wasn't that a penalty? It was when really John Parker Wilson did it. I know, I know. It's like this, <laughs> it's subjective refereeing all the time. What is it with LSU on the cell phones thing, though? Uh, they're fascinated by it. <laughs> the, the they just thing. discovered it? Maybe they'll start Twittering him to death. Or... Absolutely. <laughs> all right, our last question before we get out of here is going to be uh, the, the simplest question, and that does the SEC make it four in a row? National championships. Uh, Cecil? Without – Having studied every other team in the nation, because it's just hard to do, um, I think I think the winner of the SEC championship game, unless it's a, a stunning upset in that game, will be in the BCS. Will be in the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, not the Rose Bowl, but in Pasadena. Um, if it's USC, if you have to go out there, beat USC in Pasadena, that, that's tough for Florida, Oklahoma, Texas, whoever it may be. Um, so I, I think. This may be the kind of the year that Pete Carroll, if they don't win it, um, he's done a great job. But some people say, well, they have, they've only won one time, and it's pretty set up for Southern Cal this year. How about you, Robbie? I think you know SEC with anybody but USC in the Rose Bowl will, will win the national championship. But like Cecil said, it's like a home game almost out there for Southern Cal. They don't have to travel; the other teams do. I just have a feeling that you know if the uh, SEC is winner is playing Texas or Anybody else will hire say, I think the, the string goes to four. Well, we saw it in the Orange Bowl or whatever, the BCS Championship game. I mean, that was a Gator crowd, and it wasn't that way in, in the Fiesta Bowl the, uh, two years before. But but Chris, that was uh, a loud – it was almost like a home game for Florida, and I, I think you're, you're right. That will be the reverse there. Where did yeah. LSU win theirs? You know, yeah. The Sugar Bowl, exactly. Right. So. I, I tell you what, I've been picking the USC to win a national championship or be in the championship <laughs> game like five years in a row now or maybe even more. Uh, and as much as as much talent they have, and as good a coach as I think Pete Carroll is, I, I just think it's Florida's to to lose this year. It's just, I mean, they would have they would have gone undefeated last year, except for one play against Ole Miss. I think this team this year's team is better. Um, I like them to beat Texas actually. That's who I picked in the championship game was Florida Texas and. Um, Texas, I just think they're going to be hungry because they felt like they got snubbed last year. Um, and here's my thing. After I picked Oklahoma to win the national championship game last year, much to the chagrin of many people back in the Gator Nation, I made a vow I'm never betting against Tim Tebow again. So my answer is yes. I think the SEC will win a four straight, and I think it will be Florida, and I think they'll go 14-0. and 0. I'm not picking against him ever again. So I don't even need to make picks this year. Just pencil Florida in. So we'll, we'll see. It's going to be fun. I can't wait. As, as For all of us, we this is what we love is college football, and we live in probably the two best towns to watch it. Yeah, I would think we'll so. Argue, we'll argue with anybody on that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Until our next roundtable, Pat Dooley, Robbie Andrew, Chris Walsh, Cecil Hurd from Tuscaloosa and Gainesville saying so long. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. <laughs>